listening to A to the K. 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 Wrestle Talk Podcast. Check it out. Change your life. You'll be thanking me later. Would you like to cover the card for Survivor Series? Let's do it. So, Survivor Series 2020 consisted of, on the kickoff show, the interpromotional Battle Royal with sure. Forgotten Superstars of Raw taking on Forgotten Superstars of SmackDown. And the what winner... The forgotten Sons? <laughs> hey. <laughs> um, and the winner was The Miz, um, after we thought it wasn't sure. going to be, but he was never eliminated, so Why he not? snuck a win at the end. Why not? Why not? Um, I'm not going to cash in tonight, too. Might as well do something. <laughs> well, exactly. Sorry, guys. Um, spoilers. <laughs> we had the men's Survivor Series match with Team Raw taking on Team SmackDown, with Team Raw picking up the win um, in what was a clean sweep, which was Damn. interesting. That we was had... a nice fuck you to SmackDown. Right? <laughs> exactly. Take notes, Kenny Omega, the cleaner. This is how you do a clean sweep. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, then we had uh, New Day versus New Day Light. Um, with New Day Lights picking up <laughs> now the win. Calories. <laughs> now less calories and less entertainment all round, but with more <laughs> Damon Wayne Jr. Um, <laughs> more smoke. <laughs> more smoke. Um, speaking of which, Anthony, what is it you're drinking there? I am drinking the famous Black Grouse, but the Smoky Black. Yeah. And that's the Street like Profits would say. <laughs> if you like whiskey, this is one of them. It is. That is what they would say. Eventually, after all the roundabout, like, <laughs> stuff that they do. Yeah. And all the 90s stereotypes that they seem to do, even though they were not products of the 90s, so that kind of throws me. Yeah. yeah. And all the, you know, like, I'm going to say really bad things, but then I'm going to go <laughs> at the end of it, and then it's not really that bad. All yeah. that stuff. Um, uh, yeah. Just ADHD in a team. <laughs> Yeah, Street Profits picked up the win. The younger guys beat the older guys in um, what was, yeah, a decent match, to be fair. So the Street Profits are indeed up. <laughs> um, we had Bobby Lashley, the US champion, taking on the Intercontinental champion, Sami Zayn, with Bobby Lashley picking up the win, much no, to Anthony's dismay. I, want, I uh, wanted we, Zayn to, to pull an offset there. No, he did. He personal, to be personal, but oh, that's what I wanted. In Zayn and the Membrane. So um, we then got the two women's champions taking each other on. We got Asuka Quality taking match. on Sasha Banks. And Sasha Banks wins clean. Clean. Um, Ever since match. she turned up in The Mandalorian, people love her. <laughs> Still wasn't a Thunder Rose to be in a deep mind, but great. No. Um, we got the women's Survivor Series match with Team Raw taking on Team SmackDown. And Team Raw picked up the win. So oh, Raw was it another clean sweep? <laughs> um, well, not quite, but it was a unique finish, to say the least. Um, it was actually Lana, with the sole survivor. After all, she went through she a table. And all the tables she's been through. Um, we then got, for the main event, that wasn't really the main event of the evening, we got Drew McIntyre taking on Roman Reigns in a fucking epic. Two big, muscly bastards taking each other on. Um, and unfortunately, Roman Reigns... match has been titled Vince's Wet Dream. <laughs> um, but yeah, the head of the table, the guy who shows up and wins, the big dog... Chief, chief. chief. Hi, Chief Peter Maivia's nephew or something. Um, yeah, he picked up the win. Um, there were a few shenanigans involved, um, so it didn't make Drew look too weak. Um, but yeah. Roman wins, which I think was pretty much a given. Um, and the real main event um, wasn't actually a match, but after 30 years, it yeah. was The Undertaker's Farewell. Um, it so was. said goodbye to the dead man. Let's raise a glass. Let's raise a glass. It's empty, but we'll raise it anyway. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Cheers to The Undertaker for 30 incredible years. Yeah. Thanks for that, mate. So, cheers, cheers, Mark. Cheers, Mark Needs. Boss, you, lad. Sam, Sam, you, Callaway, lad. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to go through the highlights? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, um, I'm, I'm going to borrow from your highlights because I didn't write it down. So, okay, I'll do the highlights. Okay. 
Uh, and I do, I echo the sentiments. Now, I'll be honest, I, I, I think we both agree here that we're not big on the Street Profits. However, I do agree with the fact that the tag match was a good match mm-hmm. and the, it was the right decision to have them go over, um, especially with the New Day, who are at this point the veterans. As much as it pains me to kind of say stuff like that, it's like when you say about, you know, Brie and Nikki making a comeback, it makes me feel old. Mm-hmm. So I don't want to say these things, but the bottom line is the New Day are the veterans in the ring now. Yeah. And it was good for them to put over the new talents. And to be fair, the Street Profits are good in the ring. I just I need them to calm down a little bit on the promo front, that's all. Yeah. It could be great. I fully I fully agree with you. Like they they do frequently often put on really good matches. It's just it's their character work. Like I feel like someone told them at some point in, in time that what they were doing was funny and like them being big is entertaining. And it's like, well it's it's not. It really isn't. Like you're not funny, you're just big, you're loud. Um yeah. <laughs> just yeah. Sh- just shush a little. Just just do the rot the thing from friends with Ross. Just <laughs> Um, just do that a little bit <laughs> guys guys indoor <laughs> voice <laughs> um, but yeah so I yeah. don't know um, I, do, I, I do like them to a degree but yeah they don't are fucking great on me but it's one of them like you, you alluded to it before they, but, New Day are doing nothing are they like they are literally lost they were terrible on the mic on Raw they're just floating around you know they were dressed up as characters from Gears of War because they're now fucking... Oh, you know, they, they are playable well, DLC. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Five now, yeah. apparently, so, guys. So because, like, they're just fucking merchandise whores, basically. And then, uh, for no reason, Big E's back <laughs> with them. And it's like, okay. So, yeah, I don't really know what they are um, anymore. They were broken up. And Big E was meant to be on his own. But then there's still the New Day. But they're not really entertaining anymore. So I don't really know. Yeah. Plus, I think uh, WWE are going to put them back together pretty soon, to be honest. And I think the reason for that is you know, the the merch and the ideas they're getting with things like Gears of War 5, mm. uh, wanting, to, wanting them to be DLC and stuff, they, they, there's a lot of money to make from the New Day outside of wrestling. So I think yeah. they're probably going to slam them back together anyway for some hackneyed reason. Um, Just to clarify as well, I'm pretty sure it is, but this up, up, down, down, is that to be owned now? Is it on? Because I don't, I don't see him getting shit. Sure. I don't, I don't see know him getting for shit. sure. What I will say is the amount of WWE people and the fact that he managed to play PS4 in the WrestleMania arena on the fucking massive Titantron screens, I reckon he's probably got the okay from WWE. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking, obviously, we spoke uh, about uh, what it is being able to have a podcast, Bruce Pritchard. Yeah. No, it is interesting. And I'd love to know if they own it, own it, but they certainly have a heavy involvement in it. Mm. Um, and I don't know, maybe Xavier followed the right path to go, and this is what I want to do. Can I do it? And they've gone, yeah, but you know, because mm-hmm. I, I found I always thought they weren't because Xavier always makes a point of making people have their own character names when they're in there. So Xavier's Austin Creed, and anytime he gets a new guest on, they pick a name for themselves so they're not going by the WWE name, mm-hmm. but it is still very heavily WWE. So I don't know, they've, they've got to be involved some way, but I wouldn't know that for sure, in all honesty. Yeah. No, oh, anyway, sorry for the digression. I was just wondering. Because, actually, cause I, sorry, I, I don't mean to digress further, but at the same time, Up, Up, Down, Down has featured uh, Omega and the Young Bucks. Well, exactly. Like so, we, we spoke about that last week or the week before, yeah. and I was thinking, in light of everything that's going on, like why? Why is it okay? But anyway, unless they just turn around and went, look, this is unlike the others. This is insanely popular, so um, we're just gonna buy it off here. Okay, <laughs> maybe they've done that. I don't know. Maybe, maybe. So the next highlight, Carl, um, Asuka versus Banks. What a match. And mm-hmm. isn't it nice to see Sasha actually go over clean? No fucking about. Yep. She, she's defending titles. She's still the champion. She's beaten one of the best in the biz at the minute. I mean, awesome. Why not? It's this is about the fucking way. time, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, these two, I've, I've been, you know, I've watched a couple of their matches over you know, the last few months and stuff. And there's always been some level of shenanigans or Bailey was always around and something was always happening. Whereas this was just them two going at it and they've always put on great matches, but this one was just, you know, great again and excellent chemistry together. And as you said, it was just great to see it go over clean for, it feels like a long time in in the making. Indeed. 
I'll let you do the next one, Carl. I feel like you've got a special <laughs> affinity for this. This is your era stuff. So the next highlight's yours, man. I'll, I'll let you have it. Well, um, I was just made up to see the gobbledygooker back. Um, <laughs> not just back, but also winning the 24-7 title. So I think I mentioned on one of the segments we've done in the past that um, we could have actually seen um, the thing inside the egg be the Undertaker. So that was something that was thrown around, um, mm. whether or not he was going to be in the gobbledygooker costume, whether he was going to be the Undertaker, but just inside an egg. Like It was all up for discussion because typical WWE style, they planned the segments and had no idea what the, what the fucking the end goal was going to be. They just wanted yeah. to have this egg. Hold up the hype. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, luckily for all of us, 30 years later, it wasn't the Undertaker inside that fucking egg. Um, and it was the gobbledygooker. But yeah, it was just a great nice little touch. flashback. <laughs> yeah. A great little flashback to some terrible, corny, cheesy times in WWE's past. Um, but apparently it was uh, Drew Gulak who was playing the gobbledygooker as well. So that would just give me another little bit of a really? laugh because yeah because obviously um you know it's he's obviously involved in the 24 7 title picture but he just played him really well i thought it was quite funny um but, also yeah. quite funny because it's like uh oh, i'm gonna leave and they're like no no sign back with us drew sign back with us we'll do great things <laughs> with you and then what yeah. months later he's dressed as it uh, exactly uh, exactly yeah Last highlight, Carl. Last highlight, and it deserves to be a highlight. It was always going to be a highlight, Carl, and that is Roman versus Drew. So what good. a match! Mm-hmm. These two have got some fantastic in-ring chemistry. They've been like again. I feel like a broken record at this point, but the considering like the what the two weeks they had to build this up, I was so hyped for this match anyway. Yeah. And I think you mentioned it before that you know no one come out of this looking weak. No, like they gave Roman the win and. I'll be honest, I, I honestly wouldn't have been bothered whoever won this. Mm-hmm. It wouldn't have upset me. And uh, Roman won, you know, fair enough, but it hasn't damaged Drew even slightly. It was a really good, hard-hitting match. Thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah, I mean, we, we are quite uh, critical of shenanigans, and typically because of the amount that we see. Um, yes. But for me, I don't think they could have done any better with how they handled this. Like, Drew kicked out of several spears, Superman punches, whatever, that Roman threw at him. Um, And then, you know, by all accounts, Drew pretty much added one when he hit Claymore out of nowhere that meant there was a ref bump and the ref was out of it. And then Jey Uso comes down, super kicks Drew. um, And then there's a low blow uh, from Roman, um, Superman punch. And yeah, so like it it took a lot, basically. Um, He ended up, uh, he didn't even tap out. You know, he he choked him out with his guillotine. like finish that he's adopted now. So they yeah. couldn't have done any more to make Drew look strong still in defeat. But at the same time, it didn't necessarily make Roman look weak because he did batter Drew for good parts, but he just couldn't yeah. put him away. And then he can always be like, well, I didn't ask Jay to get involved in my match and, you know, all that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah. He, had it, he had it covered and blah, blah, blah. Because obviously earlier on in the night, you know, again, great heel work. He was like, I don't want to don't see you right now. You're a loser. Go home. And he sent yeah. him home and then he stuck around to, you know, make it up to him, I guess. But, you no, know, I was just, I said before, th- this this is a main event at WrestleMania kind of match. These are the two oh, yeah. biggest, like, I don't know what era, like the COVID era, fuck it, let's go with it. You know, we've had the Ruthless Aggression era with the John Cena's and all them come out of it. And, um, you know, we've gone through all these eras and we've kind of really been struggling for top stars in the last few kind of years. But, you know, definitely you've got Roman Reigns as a heel is a mega star. Like Roman as a face was was good. He was a good company boy, but the fans didn't really get behind him. As a heel, everyone fucking loves him and he's become that next level up. And it's what we always spoke about. He had the potential to be and he's, he's lived that. Drew McIntyre has just come out of fucking nowhere. Like when he, when he won the Royal Rumble and he knocked fucking Brock Lesnar out and twatted Brock at WrestleMania, he was straight away a megastar. And, you know, we said before, it's so unfortunate that his reign so far have just been without audience because I know the fans will be behind him. Yeah, and we'll never truly, We'll never truly know what that reaction would have been from fans because he's been champion for so long now that that kind of, oh my God, he's won and it's Drew's time has, has died a bit, which is a shame because um, people are used to it now. He's on his second reign. So yeah. it is a massive shame. But at the same time, I don't think fans have you know, cooled off on him. I think he's still very much um, like a main event guy and he solidified himself as that. But for me, this, this this could have been like WrestleMania level main events and it was just, it was great. It was so good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. 
yeah, couldn't agree more. Mm. So, Carl, would you like to cover the O-Shites? So, I've only got uh, one, I think, unless there's any more that you want to add. Um, but I mentioned before that uh, it was a clean sweep for Raw um, in the men's Survivor Series match. Um, and it was it was interesting um, that they went with that approach, I would say. There were some good bits, or at least interesting bits, where Seth Rollins sacrificed himself um, for example, yeah, and for the greater I think good. You alluded alluded to it before, but the, there's a lot of heavy suggestion that's him out for a while now. That's them writing him out for a bit. Well, that's it. He has got nothing um, else left to do. Like he's, and uh, I think, like you say, this probably concludes. Like this is them done with the the Seth feud on SmackDown mm. as well. Um, yeah. The way this happens, so I think you're right about that. Yeah, I feel like um, it, it wouldn't surprise me if that's the end of the Messiah character because I imagine if this is the last we see of him for a bit, he's going to go away and he'll probably come back. Um, to a quite a big fan reaction as a face, maybe after being out for so long. So, are they going to lean so so far into the Jesus metaphor that he's going to rise again, come Easter? Uh, I mean, that that is definitely. A, I would not put it past them, <laughs> Anthony. Fuck, so what have you done? You give them ideas now. <laughs> why? Why would you do it? Um, but yeah, so like there was bits in it that was fine. There was bits in it that weren't as well, and it was just like one thing that really pissed me off. To be honest, is they made this big, massive deal out of Keith Lee and Otis being in the ring together. And you could you could sense it, the little undertones of like, he was like, oh, super heavyweights. And he was like, oh, it's going to be good now. And it was just like, you know what I mean? It, I, it was almost like fat shaming them a bit. I, I felt it was kind of like, oh, look, there's two, <laughs> Watch two big, dance. Watch yeah, dance. Two big fatties are going to gonna beat each other up now. Let's let's enjoy that. I don't know. <laughs> I just, that didn't well, resonate. Look at it in it. This is a, a horribly loose connection, so apologies. But look at it in any other sense. Imagine the minute two busty women in the ring that they're like, "Oh, it's good, it's good, it's good <laughs> well, now." Exactly. Like it's objectifying no matter what way you look at it. So the fact that they were just like, "Yeah, two fat guys, this is going to be good." It's like, yeah, nah, that's I just, shit. yeah, I thought that was just just lame. To be honest, I, I felt really, really bad for the pair of them because they weren't just focusing on them. It was just like, "Oh, this, you know, it's going to be, you know, what's going to happen now?" Well, Keith fatty Lee, versus fatty. It, it, is known for being surprisingly athletic for a man his size. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't even give any of that now, do they, on the main card? Mm. To be fair, I don't want to be a slight on Otis, because, you know, Otis is quite athletic as well, um, in terms of what he can do. But Yeah, but I think he Yeah, exactly, he's no Keith Lee. But, like, I felt it almost reflected a bit negatively on Keith, because it was just like, yeah, like, they didn't talk about, like, oh, they're both whatever. It was just like, oh, they're both big fat fellas about to beat each other up. But yeah, for me, the reason I put this as an O'Shea isn't just because of that. I just felt this is the least kind of, I don't know, this will be the least memorable, like, Survivor Series match, like, in a while for me. Like, it just meant nothing. Okay. The, part of, the participants in it didn't really mean anything or do anything. And, like, just the way it all unfolded was just, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like this is one of the worst Survivor Series matches I've seen. In yeah. it a long, a long time. Uh, no, I'll take your point on that. Yeah, mm. I, I probably agree with you. I, like, it, it's hard trying to think back at different Survivor series, but this, it wasn't a particularly great one. So I, th I I'm, no. I'm kind of with you on that. I honest. just felt like I'm like, gonna remember this. No, not really. No, there was no real storyline in there and stuff. You, like nothing groundbreaking. Anyway, you had AJ trying to get his team together. Okay, you had like the SmackDown team again that was just disjointed, but just. There was no storylines there. There was no invasion. There was no... And I get it, COVID times, whatever. You can't have more people, whatever. I just felt it was lazy booking. They could have done stuff to, you know, get the, the upper hand or the, the fucking... The different warfare between brands. And it just didn't happen. It just felt like it was no build. A random cast of characters who they haven't really got anything for to just throw them together. And it was just yeah. bland. So, well, not to, um, not to add, like, oh, shite in unnecessarily, but... Uh, just to make sure we've covered and Carl, because I think when I mentioned about Undertaker before and his farewell, mm -hmm. um, I, I got a vibe from you or an idea that you you may have had some issue with it. Not that you, you're sort of down on the whole thing, so it's not necessarily an mm -hmm. old shite, but that you did maybe have some issue with the way they executed the Undertaker's farewell. Yeah, so I've not put and, it as either. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's fair, but I think it's probably worth maybe a little separate thing of its own where we talk about Undertaker's farewell. Absolutely. Um, and I'm, I'm keen to get your thoughts on it as well, because for me, there was some elements of it that I just fucking loved. And then, there was, but the overall, like my, my sentiments around it was, 
it followed an incredible main event. Yeah. Um, so the placement of it felt off for me. And then you had, it just, it just didn't work. And it's such a shame if this is the last time we see Undertaker because you had the introduction of all these past superstars and the commentate, commentators were just kind of like, well, yeah, um, the reason he's come out is because, you know, uh, yeah, Undertaker threw Rikishi off a cage once. And, oh, the reason Jeff Hardy came out is because he, he had a fight with him and um, he, he really made him when he fought him on this ladder match. And, you know, it was just like, okay. Oh, are you going to have everyone who Undertaker's ever put over well, come exactly. out? Exactly. Because that's, just... that's what he did for Jeff. Did we get Maven come out? No, we didn't. <laughs> exactly. Um, um, so, But the only Mona would have, and it's not a massive problem, but mm. I think there was just too many people, Yeah, to be honest with you. Like, and again, I don't want to sound like I'm down on Jeff, but like we've already had Jeff paying tribute to him as dressing up as him and all that this week. And, you know, did he have to be his own sort of thing there. I, I, I don't know. It's, it's a tough one because everybody wants to, to pay the respect. He was a legend in the biz. So many people have got so much respect for him. I get that. I just, there was, uh, again, I'm not even being unfair on Jeff. Like he had, he had every right to sort of come out, but um, I don't know. To me, there's just too many components. I just wanted to see a nice farewell for, for Undertaker. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, don't know. It's hard. It's tough. That's, one. that's my biggest gripe with it. I just feel like the whole organization of it was silly because, you just had, it fought, like, first of all, the placements, so it followed the main events. So that was a bit like, I get it because yeah. it's, it's retirement, but well, the way they handled it. The, like, you've had such a match and you kind of, exactly, you know, yeah. and we've seen this before where you have a really good match and then you move on to a match that's meant to be really good, <laughs> mm-hmm. but everyone's so fucking deflated. Well, exactly. But it, it's just the way they did it because it was, it was after, after, that, after that match, you, you then just had all these random guys coming out to their theme songs. They got in the ring and then we just didn't see them again. They cut to an advert. And that was it. Like, they walked down. They had no interaction with Undertaker. They walked down, and the commentators said a couple of bits and bobs. Cut away. We cut back. Vince McMahon's in the ring, and he's there with this emotional speech, which was fine. And then Undertaker comes out, and then he's just kind of like... He, he starts doing a promo, and then he stops because of all the crowd noise. And it's like, but it's piped in. Like... Yeah. Like, if it was, like, a natural reaction, everyone's like, thank you, and you're taken back by it. But he's like... And it's like, it's fucking piped. It's piped in. Like, Sadly. And that's one thing I, I feel really bad for the man. Like, I kind of get the, the poetic thing of, like, he debuted at Survivor Series, and this is 30 mm. years later. But for me, I would have delayed it until the audiences were back, yeah. because this is just him coming to say goodbye. It's not like he's, he's had a match recently or had a run in WWE recently. No. He could, and I get that he's now in his head. This is him. He's retired. And I get that. But for me, I think one thing that that's missing is the crowds and the crowd reaction. He deserves that. Yeah. It's not even like griping about the whole segment. He deserves that response from the crowd. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and you know, there was stuff like the Paul Bear attributes. It, it got me to be fair. I was oh, yeah, like, yeah. I had like um, goosebumps. I even got like a little bit of a, I don't know, a little bit of a lump in my throat just seeing it. Oh, because... no, I, I totally get that. <clears throat> and, um, it, you know, it, it was really touching. And to be honest, I think it got a lot of people. I've seen a ton of that particular mm. bit on social media today just yeah. because I think that got a lot of people, understandably so. Yeah, definitely. Like it was such a such an emotional moment to see that, obviously, thinking back to, you know, over them 30 years, you know, he is synonymous with Undertaker and, especially in those early days, like with the promos and stuff, like Paul Bear is just a legend. So it was great to see him reference him as well. But yeah, I just, it just didn't work for me. And it's a horrible thing to say, you know, if it is the last time we see him, but it was just, it just didn't work. Like having all those guys come out felt silly when there was no payoff. Yeah. Having Vince cutting a big promo and he's like, oh, back in the WWF, we're now the WWE. And it's like, you're not getting yourself over Vince. You're not trying to get, cheap pops or like people talking about you saying WWF. Do you know what I mean? It was just, yeah. I don't know, that felt a bit oh, like... Definitely, a, like, I think he wanted that to trend. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that felt a bit like self-absorbed and then it was just like, okay, Undertaker had a bit of a, a new, weird, kind of remixed theme music a little bit and he comes out and, yeah, I don't know. I, like, it ended well, obviously, with him saying like, The Undertaker will rest in peace and like all that was fantastic you know in terms of how it's scripted and him going down and putting the arm up and stuff loved all that but yeah yeah i think the way they got there was just yeah it was really weird and i just wasn't a fan which was a shame but 
yeah, I don't want to shit on, you know. Oh obviously. no, I think I, I think it's it's only fair. Like we mentioned <clears> these things, <throat> like because it, it was. It, I, I've mentioned a few hundred times. Undertaker is my favorite wrestler, mm-hmm. and despite him not being your favorite, you've obviously you've had him in your sort of wrestling life that whole oh, time. Yeah. Like every year of wrestling you've loved, he's been there. Which is crazy when you think about it. Oh, yeah. um, he's, he's definitely up there for me as well. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's yeah. always. No, I know, I know you see him as one of the best, but like, mm. like I don't know it, and it's never not going to be a nice touching tribute. And there were there were a ton of touching elements there, and it was a nice moment. But like I don't know, I think because we're so sort of like this is under this is the phenom, you know, it it's almost like you come out of it like he kind of deserved more than that. Mm. And I know they can't give him that at the moment, but. I don't know. That that's what kind of that's what kind of, I kind of struggled with. I suppose is like it would have been so much better if we could have done this in front of an audience. Yeah, it's like and like don't get me wrong. I know <clears throat> like all COVID and stuff has obviously played a big part in it because you know they had limited people or whatever. But he, he didn't even get like I don't know. Like you'd have, I expected everyone to be out on the stage and like clapping him or something as he came down, and you just didn't get any of that. You got a couple of guys walking out who are guys probably more interested in their own egos than they are, than they are take care of, we're being honest, mm. coming out for their own little, like, yeah, look, I'm back on telly. Or, you know, and then they fuck off, don't have no interaction. And then we're on to Vince, and then Vince fucks the off. Trouble, and you can't really, they couldn't embrace <clears throat> anyone. You know, it was, yeah, it was kind of strange, really. But don't, don't like, anyone listening, don't sort of take it too thingy. Like, it was still a nice tribute to Undertaker, mm. you know we're not ragging it that much. It's just, um, I don't know, it's probably not what he deserved or what we expected, I suppose. No, I, I, I expected more. And I think to your point, it's maybe it would have been better to wait and do it properly. Like, I, 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 I personally think it would have been, he's like, he's synonymous with WrestleMania. Hopefully mm. this next WrestleMania will be in front of an audience. Why not have a moment then? Yeah. But, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, yes. Yeah. So genuinely though, <laughs> absolute legend. And this feels like he's, he's, actually hung up his boots this time so it's it's devastating because i always every time mm. he kind of retires i'm always like ah, he'll be back <laughs> and i always hope that he is but yeah. uh, this time i don't know feels feels legit man yeah i think it he would look a bit silly now because cause obviously we alluded to when he left his hat and his gloves and whatever in the ring that that was it then he came back and was like oh he is back but i think, now yeah, it's kind of I think have... in his head he's been ready to retire for a while he just he, he struggles yeah. to sort of let Vince down doesn't he so he won't yeah won't say no to the man in a sense no. but, but I think uh, after all this kind of rigmarole if he then just shows up shows up at a fucking Saudi show uh, yeah, like, you're like okay come on you're like te- <laughs> well, this <laughs> is my Funk final thing. final farewell for real this yeah, time <laughs> exactly so I don't know I th- it's really bittersweet because I would love to see him back to do it properly but at the same time after after that you'd like to think that he's not going to come back which is obviously a shame but and you know what I, lo- I love seeing him on screen so I don't mean this how it's going to sound but if you genuinely only retired The Undertaker and you keep rocking off as Mark Calloway, I'm going to be pissed right off. Oh, well, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know how to take it because everyone who's retired, Shawn Michaels, Ric Flair, whatever, if they're under contract with WWE, we see them again. Yeah. Like, they won't wrestle, sure, but we still see them again. Like, he's not, like, Shawn's quite like, oh, no, I'm Michael Hickenbottom now. And, you know, it's the thing. Like and do you know what? Like, I think it's interesting as well because... I can't remember how long ago, but it was only a few weeks ago, I think, maybe a couple of months, where we reported that he'd signed a big multi-year deal with WWE mm. that would see him going into his 70s. Yes. So he's still going to be a product of WWE in some sense. Well, that's it. He's going to be some sort of brand ambassador. He's going to be involved in some capacity. In some way, yeah, yeah. So That's interesting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But no, Survivor Series itself, Anthony, I thought pretty much start to end, if you exclude the kickoff show and... The Bobby Lashley match, and uh, okay, so maybe not start to end, but it was pretty good. I thought um, the main event was fantastic. Sasha Asuka was really good. Um, Second half of it was decent. <laughs> Everything after the gobbledygook was pretty good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, yeah, mm. it was mm. good. It was good. I thought for it didn't necessarily feel like one of the big four still, but it was a good. I like, obviously, the whole concept of it, of being like brand warfare. You've got your best of SmackDown versus your best of Raw. So I'm always going to be into it in that sense. But, yeah, I don't know. Some of the matches were a bit meh. 
but then you had some fantastic matches as well. Well, obviously Drew and Roman and Asuka Sasha, and as much as I'm shitting all over the Taker thing, obviously it was Taker's final bar. Oh yeah, so. you can't. It's always enjoyable in a way. We just offered some sort of critique. Absolutely. So with that being said, Anthony, what would you say your rating is for the show? Three. Okay. Um, I was also thinking three. Um, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm trying to basically debate whether it's a three or a three and a half because I don't want people to be like, oh, well, you're still giving AEW the best thing you've well, ever had to I'll be honest with you. And it's not because I think like, because I get where you're coming from with that, but at the same time, like that was some of the deciding factor for me. I was like, well, yeah, it's probably on par with AEW. Mm. And it shouldn't be. It should be better, really. It's a pay-per-view, for God's sake. One of the bigger pay-per-views. So it's still not like a massive compliment to them. But I gave uh, Dynamite a three, if that helps you at all. And I'm giving this a three because I think they were equal to one another. Yeah, I think I think based on that alone, I can't really score it less than a normal episode of Dynamite. So let's give that extra 0.5 and take away my bitterness on how the Taker thing was handled and just actually celebrate the fact it was... You know, take it was celebrated. You know, so. 30 damn years. 30 damn years. With a 3.5. <laughs> so uh, that was Survivor Series. And that was another week of A to the K's Wrestle Talk podcast. Yes, it was. We it hope was you've enjoyed fun. this ride. We do. And enjoy that ride even more by following us on our social channels, Anthony. Where can they follow yeah. us? Let the people know where we be. Where can they follow us? Where can't they follow us more? Like <laughs> They can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Tumblr, others. They can follow us on YouTube. They can go on, subscribe. They can click the bell to get updates on our videos. They can go on to anywhere they get their podcasts and find us there. We have our own website. They can go to a to the k.co.uk. They can also, whilst they're on there, click on the shop link and maybe have a look at some of that crazy merch that we've got. Fantastic overview that was, Anthony. Absolutely smashed it. Um, but yeah, another week, Anthony. Another week another, in the bag. Another Next week, week. Nearly ending our first year in all really? this. Mm. Like, depends how you look at it. I'm looking at it like, if we go calendar year, like, I'm thinking season two of eight or year two is going to be January onwards. But yeah. technically, we started in the Feb because we were still fucking around with ideas so technically our first episode took place in february so if you want to go an exact year to then it'd be february but for me i'm like no we we, we go for the year because february is a weird place to end things so i'm thinking end of december in the new year it's going to be a new year a new season it's a new, it's a it's a new, new generation um yeah i'm on board with that i think we're coming up to end of year one and we're going to kick off Fresh year two in January or the end of December, whenever we can be asked, really. Um, and obviously, we're going to produce in, in January our uh, Down Since Year One t shirt. <laughs> so uh... that's it. Yeah. <laughs> but Anthony, let's not write this year off yet, even though many people oh, want to, because 2020 has sucked ass. But next week, anyone listening, we may have alluded to it. If you've any little, you know, detectives amongst you, you may have picked up on our super subtle hints um, throughout the show that we may or have if a you special follow guest. us on anywhere social media wise or follow us on Reddit, you definitely know what's happening next week. <laughs> yes, you do. Um, but we may or may not be speaking to a special guest next week, one that we're very excited about. Um, Indeed. Hits so home in a lot of senses, hits home. It does hit home, very much so, as a pair of British badasses. Um, but yes. We will Indeed. be speaking to somebody next week. Um, so we're excited about that. Um, and, and obviously, we're not going to give it away. You have to tune in next week to find out exactly who that was. Exactly. Because exactly. <laughs> we covered it up so well. So well. So well. So we will see you all <laughs> next week. Take it easy, guys. Hey, everybody. This is Thunder Rosa, and you're watching or listening A to the Cake.